Hi, I'm Phil Anderson and welcome to my channel. I've been a property investor now for over 30 years and I've watched investors continue to make the same common investment mistakes. There's so many dirty tricks in the real estate industry and it's all caught up in a whole heap of sales hype. I want to cut through that sales hype and help investors avoid the common mistakes. I hope you enjoy the following content, but please remember to like and subscribe. G'day listeners and viewers across the country and welcome to another episode of Street Smart Property Investing where I'm joined once again by Mr. Trent Durrington. How are you, Duro? Good, Phil. Good, mate. Um, good to talk property. Mate, it is. I tell you what, uh, the locals are talking property and today we're going to talk about why we are seeing once again uh, why so many locals often miss the boom and in this broad-based boom across Australia I think it's really relevant to point out the reasons why so many locals don't take advantage of the boom that's right in front of them so let's break that down a little bit because I think it's an interesting topic for today it certainly is um, and it's you know and it's changing monthly moves so quick before a typical local can put their head up and realize what's going on they, uh, it's too late. Mate, I think it's conditioning. I think a big thing that I've noticed over the years is most locals, you know, they can't uh, get their head around uh, what others are seeing from the outside looking in. But a local sitting in a conditioned environment, you know, they may see a house, you know, three doors up the road, get listed for sale. They see the price that that person's listed their property for sale. They sit around and go, geez, he's dreaming. He's never going to get, you know, 700000 for that property. Uh, then within days, that property sold and someone from out of town's come in and paid 800000 for that property. It's a common occurrence. It, it certainly is. Um, and I think but probably there's not a family in Australia that's not seeing that um, nationally but and locally in their little pocket. Yeah. You might, look, yeah. I think the thing is, I think... Um, you know, that conditioned, um, you know, kind of belief that, you know, property isn't going to continue to move. I think we've now seen plenty of proof and evidence in, oh, mate, dozens and dozens of postcodes nationally that I think a lot of people are realising, well, heck, prices have moved a lot, but there's also now that next level of belief of it can't continue to move. No, that's right. That's right. And, um, you know, I still see that um, stock's limited. Mm-hmm. Um, people that uh, potentially want to sell, they've got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's also um, affecting the ripple to the regions that we yeah. were always talking about. Yeah. Um, this last lockdown COVID period that um, specifically Sydney and, and uh, in Melbourne are going through, um, seems like this one's, it is obviously harder than probably the when the pandemic started. But I also feel like it's um, specifically to Sydney people are, are really going to give themselves a slap and think, you know, what what am I doing? Where am I living? Oh. Um, and what does that mean as far as a push to the regions? Mate, there's plenty of data to support that. Mm. There are literally tens of thousands of people at the moment asking that question of, uh, you know, themselves and uh, you know that spillover into all the data we're now seeing that there are you know like I said tens of thousands of families in Sydney and Melbourne we're seeing whole estates where we're going in and talking to the land developers and they're talking about 40 percent of an estate being pre-sold yeah. to, to yeah, families yeah. coming out of Melbourne yeah, yeah alone no, it, it is it is it's um you know it, it's it just it, ever-changing and moving and um it's hard to uh, we can't forecast where it's gonna where it's gonna go. But you know, I mean, we've got the vision, but I mean, um, it's, well, it's hard uh, to get your head around even yeah, for is, us guys. Yeah, we is, live yeah. in that space, and mm. you've got to you know give some you know credit to the average Australian that is busy with life anyway. They don't spend anywhere near the hours that we do on research. Mm. Um, you know, and we still go, wow, how much further can some of these regional markets push? You know, we get mm. challenged, but at the same time, the data, it made it, um, there is no stock. We know that there's mm. very little land out there. There's very little land. You know, it's, it's near impossible for the average investor to get their hands on a good block mm. of land. Mm. Mm. And the pipeline for land development is getting so exhausted mm. that this, um, you know, there's a window of like three to five years for councils to adjust infrastructure and bring more land on, create more stock. There's a real issue in the market with stock levels so low and yet upward pressure uh, on supply coming out of Sydney and Melbourne. Um, 
Yeah, the rental, like the examples, the rental market, people paying 12 months up front, uh, increasing, making $100 a week additional offers on the rent. Um, you know, that, that really affects the locals because, you know, uh, I am seeing now that the rental market, it's a real crisis that's really, it's unfolding. Don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, the people are paying upwards of 40% of their uh, gross income on rent. You yeah. know, and I think um, the affordability factor, they talk about it around no more than 30%, and then it's really starting to hurt your hip pocket on your weekly... Um, so you this know. is the issue, right? Yeah. Because you get a local that, one, you know, I feel sad for them sitting there going, we need to buy a house, they're taking their time to figure it out. If that's a, their situation, they're looking and going, well, they're never going to achieve that price and the price is, you know, $100,000 more than what that asking price was. I think those people start to go, geez, are we ever going to be able to get into our own local market? Then the renters, as you said, they're sitting there going, oh, our lease is up for renewal, you know, 500 bucks a week. Um, uh, maybe we have to brace ourselves for a little bit of an increase. That rent uh, review comes in and it's higher than they expected. They go, wow, now we, you know, we can't afford that rent. Mm -hmm. And yet someone else that's moving into town that's bringing with them a higher income mm -hmm. because they're bringing jobs with them these days, that remote workforce is coming in where the local might yep. be on... 60 or 70 grand a year, yeah. the, the, the uh, person uh, bringing their you know, re remote uh, job with yeah, them yeah. are coming in on 100 grand a year and they're saying, oh, we're quite comfortable paying $600 a week and we'll give you six months in advance. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. It's, um, it's Trump card. Yeah, yeah, and I'm seeing and hearing a lot more about that remote working around. It's not work from home, it's remote working, mm -hmm. you know? So um, the businesses, are, I feel like there's they've notched up their um, thoughts around their workforce working from home or working, rem it's not working from home, it's working remotely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, developers are quickly pivoting to provide, um, you know, facilities for people to work remotely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's an interesting time that I think is really starting to sink in. Yeah. And look, I think that is really interesting because that remote working is, uh, certainly a little bit misunderstood because I think there's people that are probably over working from home. You know, there's people yeah. that can do it well, there's people yeah. that don't do yeah. it so well. Yeah. But what's happening, I'm seeing, is those regional areas that are booming, those lifestyle areas, uh, the smaller office spaces, the smaller work areas. Um, you know, as people are moving out of Sydney and Melbourne, they may only have a very small team they need to recreate or whatever in that local market, um, or they just want a bit of a space. And those smaller office spaces, those smaller little industrial bays and so forth, they are jam-packed. It's like, uh, mm. you know, those mm. the regional markets are booming in every, every facet, mm. every facet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, so it's... Um you know, coming back to the locals and the locals, um, you know, not keeping up with the, the wave, uh, and the influx of um, out-of-towners coming in and, and making life difficult for mm -hmm. them. Uh, but it's, you mentioned it before, that regenification of an area. Um, we're seeing it through a range of different products and areas. Yeah. yeah. Well, mate, I, the, the thing that I find fascinating in a boom, uh, typically you and I are watching maybe, I don't know, six or eight postcodes at any one time. We've been doing this for many years. But six or eight postcodes, we're watching the ripple roll out and what it affects and where that, you know, those growth corridors are going to present. Of course, at the moment, it's a national booming market. Most markets are booming uh, nationally. Uh, we focus particularly on the, the big regionals, like the biggest, you know, strongest uh, secondary cities mm. uh, in the, the States. But if you look at, I don't know, a Port Macquarie, like it's an A-grade uh, community, which I believe it is, it's one of the strongest performing regional markets at the moment, there's a market... 15 minutes away from Port Macquarie, which is, of course, the township of Warhope, that becomes the B-grade community of that A-grade coastal community. And that ripple is already pushed out of Port Macquarie. Now, people that would typically go, oh, we can't get a place to, to rent or we can't afford to buy in Port Macquarie, will do so in a Warhope. Warhope's also now gone, right? And yeah. all of a sudden, Warhope... Yeah. yeah, it is a good example. New little Although cafes, Warhope's a lovely town. A lovely yeah. town, right? Yeah. There's yeah. nothing that's yeah. certainly become almost like a suburb of Port mm. Macquarie, mm. but now Warhope has got the trendy cafes emerging, and we're seeing this mm. so often in so many markets. 
and also you can't get a property. It's like nearly 0% vacancy rate. So now the C grade areas and, you know, the Kempseys and the places that are less desirable than Warhope, mm. which are now a half an hour away from Port Macquarie, they're the C grade communities where that spillover goes to and they get the upward pressure. Now, Port Macquarie is not on its own. You know, uh, Coffs Harbour, we've seen that spill along the coastline and so many other key regional markets that we watch yeah. and we took advantage of them a year ago, mm. and we have been, you know, kind of investing heavily into those yeah. markets. Yeah. It's about this, um, I think, it's about the locals sitting there and thinking this can't continue to happen. And yet, even if you come back to a Port Macquarie where a median house may now be outpricing the local, you know, a local goes, and we're seeing it because we're seeing locals in those markets saying, wow, we can't afford to buy a family home. We're going to take our money now and buy in southeast Queensland, which I think is still very affordable, and it's about to go through the same mm. growth phase. Mm. Mm. Um, so the locals in a town like Port Macquarie or Coffs Harbour can't afford to buy. They're now looking at properties in southeast Queensland, two hundred thousand dollars cheaper, mm. and that becomes more affordable yeah. for them. Well, I had that example yesterday with a tradesman working on my place. Currently, um, just moved up from Melbourne. Yeah, sold his place in there for one point four. Bought a place here for 1.3. Uh, it's twice the size, cl- close to um, you know infrastructure and uh, its lifestyle. He's it's like he's won the lottery and he's you know he's living the dream. Yeah, well, mate, I, I I've literally been talking to a couple of people I'm working with that weren't even interested in going through that. Now they're very much because they're just over the lockdowns. Yeah. Now they're yeah. saying we know we could get like the 1.5s, 1.6s, you know, for their humble uh, mm. property in Sydney. Mm. Um, and they're targeting Port Macquarie and those sorts of places mm. and saying we can go in there and buy a beautiful home for 800000 and would nearly have no mortgage, mm. right? So yeah. Yeah, it's no, a lifestyle change yeah. straight away. Yeah. Yeah. But the locals sitting there think... It can't continue to go. But from outside looking in, the outsiders looking at these beautiful lifestyle locations still see it as being quite affordable. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, um, they are. You know, it comes back to, um, you know, there's... there's On their income, yeah, you know, what yeah. they can borrow when yeah. they sell a house they may be in already. All of those factors combine and they become incredibly affordable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's people in the in the property game. We're 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 obviously talking investing. Have different philosophies and and theories or motivations behind you know what we feel like mm-hmm. uh, affordable is always nothing out of po- pocket for us and cash flow positive and um, these areas are you know five plus percent yield sometimes you know seven eight percent. Mm-hmm. Um, Affordable, sometimes half the median price of um, you know capital cities, uh, and desirable. You just drive around, lifestyle, yeah. Yeah, wide, yeah. wide streets, coastal, sometimes country, mm-hmm. wh- whatever it might be. It's just, uh, it's more and more, especially as we get into this next wave of COVID, which is really unfortunate for the southern states. Um, they're going to really, I think, this next wave is, is hurting them. Oh, um, but I yeah. agree, especially I think, people out of Sydney. I think um, this this last little one's hurting them. They're gonna, it's it's building it's up, kick right? Again. It's yeah, I kick can feel again. those floodgates yeah. are about to yeah. release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think we're going to see over the summer period. We're going to see enough listings come on in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, people that have been preparing their houses to sell and list. I think there's going to be enough listings coming on that the people that aren't considering the move will now be able to list their property for sale as well and move to a, an area they would prefer to be in, but they just don't have the luxury of knowing that you know, if they sold, they could buy another property. So mm. I think there'll be listings will create more listings in mm. Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, I think that will soften those markets. Um, I think that will perhaps send negative messages through the media that the, you know, the Australian property market is falling or whatever because there's a softening in the Sydney and Melbourne. You and I know that, you know, rarely is there ever one conversation about Australia. This is the first time I can remember in 30 plus years of investing that there's such a broad-based story Mm. uh, to the property market. Mm. Mm. But what they're missing in that whole softening of Sydney and Melbourne, if those listings come on at the, the level I expect them to, is that those people selling those properties are going to be targeting lifestyle locations that are already totally undersupplied for stock and the prices just get pushed up even further. Mm. Yeah. And they're, they're affordable for them at the, at the moment. It's not mm. like they're going, oh, but now those markets are unaffordable. They're un- unaffordable for the locals. 
because the yeah. locals are sitting there on lower incomes. You know, they're just and, – and, and I feel sad for the locals that are sitting yeah. there going, um, yeah. oh, we're not going to buy now because it'll correct. You know, prices will come off again. We'll buy on the other side. Man, nah. it's not coming off. You it's not it. coming off. I can't no, see how no, it could. No, you know, no. there's no, no practical forecast that would say that, you know, the regionals are going to, you know, come off the edge of a boom and, and, and reduce in price. No, I can't see that. Not, not, not driven by um, – the stimulus infrastructure spend by government and also the population growth that's going to continue to spill into those areas. Supply and demand. It's as simple as that. It's supply and demand. And unfortunately, locals will eventually get priced out of their own market. Mm. They won't be able to afford to buy. They won't be able to afford to rent. Um, And I see A-grade areas, you know, obviously continue to just improve and get, you know, median house prices continue to rise. The B grades, you know, benefit because people need to move to the B grade areas. If the booms are big enough, then the C grades really benefit mm. as well. And that's just a natural flow that happens in every It's a natural cycle. flow. It's a natural flow. You're seeing it in uh, the bigger developers paying, you know, in greenfield sites. Yeah. They've got to pay, in the last 12 months, greenfield, just a paddock of dirt has increased 40%. Yeah. Uh, you're seeing that now. That's, yeah. a, that's a big jump. Yeah. Um, and that flows, that gets passed on to the consumer all the way through, right? So, um, yeah. And I think one of the things that would also be important is, you know, the energy we have about um, the excitement we have about the regional markets and what we think is going to come out of Sydney. Not a day goes past that we're not also feeling really bad for the tenants. You know, there's a rental crisis out there. It's hard to celebrate how great and how optimal the conditions are for property investing at the moment when you know so many people are going through so much pain. Mate, I've, got, I've got a daughter and a son-in-law in, in the Sydney market. They've been locked down for four or five weeks mm. now. And you go, well, you know, we had a little taste of it just recently where we yeah. had to stay home for a week and we went, oh, bloody hell, how tough is that? It was tough. Sydney yeah. and Melbourne, mate, yeah. they've been yeah. going through a horrific time. So, yeah, you know, so our hearts go out, out to those people. shout out to them, yeah. 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 And, and on the back of that as well, it's not just the people in the lockdowns. Mate, there are people doing it tough. There are people that have been impacted. You know, we've been very fortunate that the property market has has really kicked and our sector of the world has never been, you know, uh, busier and, 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 you know, business and our investing has never been more healthy, I guess. Um, But the reality is everyone's got different circumstances. And, And I think the big thing for us guys is that, you know, we're trying to find the opportunity always in any change to the property market and, and, and the economic conditions. Um, and all we can do is, you know, paint a picture of where we see that flow going for mm. those people that are in a position to take advantage of it. No, that's right. That's right. It's, um, you know, just coming back to what's going on now, we're talking about inflation versus deflation, uh, all these Sydney and Melbourne locked down. Uh, it's probably another re- little reset. Um, it's another probably another opportunity to say interest rates aren't going anywhere for a while yeah um a number of years mm-hmm. um so you know you know come this period coming into christmas and we look at our vaccines um it's probably at that point we might have a better feel for you know the effect of what this lockdown's happening mm-hmm. but um you know for property investors it's uh it, it's good times ahead really Mate, it is. I think uh, COVID has definitely changed national property markets forever. The things that we knew were going to happen have just accelerated much Mm. quicker than we thought. We Mm. knew those key regionals were going to be, you know, very good investment areas because we knew the downsizes that were going to come out of Sydney. Latest data is there's 1.6 million homes being prepared to sell in the next one to five years out of Sydney and Melbourne. Mm, mm. Um, you know, there's tens of thousands a quarter rolling out of those markets into regional areas and spilling. And the biggest winner at the moment, South East Queensland. There's one heck of a story in amongst, you know, the opportunity for investors. But I think one of the biggest single mindset changes I've seen at the moment is how people see the regional markets. It used to be almost like if you're moving to the regionals, maybe your business wasn't going so good and people judged you a little bit. Whereas now people that are able to leave Sydney and Melbourne and move to the regional markets, people are like, how lucky are they? How how awesome is it that they've got a a job and an ability to be able to move to those markets? Mm. There's no, I don't know, there's no confusion around uh, the excitement lifestyle. and lifestyle yeah, and the price of that, is. man, it's, it's changed everything, <laughs> yeah, right? Has, yeah. So like, yeah. the, I guess the key message here for locals is be careful. The yeah. markets are moving. If you're in an area that you know is popular for people downsizing and retiring and that lifestyle change, 
don't think the the pedal's going to come off anytime soon. Mm. Make some changes, prepare yourself. Um, mm. but, but the, you know, at the end of the day, those locals can take advantage of what's happening as well. That's the big message. They right? may choose not to sell. They might get uh, create an opportunity for them to have s- some equity that they've never had. Mm. and an opportunity to invest potentially yeah. you know there's there'll be definitely positives out of it yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. it's the frog in the water story yeah. mate yeah it's the tenant it's the tenants that um you know it's unfortunate for them at the moment yeah and and, and, yeah. and i think uh also young families that could potentially put a bit more effort into getting into the market yeah but are holding off going no nah, it can't continue to go it's going to correct i think that's a big mistake uh, if mum and dad can give you a hand or whatever it takes, I think now's the time to really give that some serious consideration. But outside of that, like I said, it's uh, an opportunity for everyone. I just don't want people sitting back and the water coming to the boil and, like I said, the frog in the water story and uh, locals looking at it and going, you know, it's not going to continue to move. But from outside looking in, many of those markets have got incredible, you know, mm. five to seven years ahead, I think. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. I mate, agree. thanks for joining me. Good on you, mate. All right. I hope you got Listeners. something out of that, guys. We'll talk again very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and also feel free to leave me a question. I look forward to helping as many property investors as possible. Take care and we'll talk soon.